This film is unbelievable. The plot is ridiculous. The acting is horrendous. The script is appalling and the music is dire. But more on that later. Also known as Road to Revenge and Get Even, this is Champagne and Bullets. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is Rick and he's the main character. Hi. He's LAPD and he's on a drug bust with his friend Huck and their superior, Normad. And oh no, Huck's been shot. Oh no. Rick's like, we need to help Huck. But Normad's like, no we don't. I don't care if he dies. <laughs> A year later, it seems Normad hasn't let that incident go because he reports them both for doing drugs on the job and they get sacked. So now they spend their days drinking and shooting at targets. At this point, I feel we need to discuss Rick's clothes. Here, he's donning a Velour USA tracksuit. One of those 70s ones that you rub one way and it's darker than it is if you rub it the other way. Yes, of course. Incredibly, his outfits seem to get worse as the film goes on, but more on that later. Rick now works as a limo driver, and we see him dropping some customers off out in the middle of nowhere and driving off. Adios, Bill Lugosi. Yeah. Huck, on the other hand, hangs around at home doing chores drunk and talks to this life-size indigenous person of America doll. Rick then turns up in what I'm guessing is this limo driving uniform, full leathers with fingerless gloves. Just imagine ordering a car and the driver showing up wearing that. Anyway, Huck convinces Rick to go out to a bar that night and there they bump into Rick's ex-girlfriend, Cindy, who's out drinking with her mum. Rick and Cindy start talking and we find out that this is the first time anyone's seen Cindy in months. She's like, what's new with you, Rick? And he's like, oh, I got sacked from the LAPD and now I'm a limo driver. And she's like, oh. Then someone in the bar shouts, Rick, get on stage. We're going to play your favorite song. He's like, nah, not tonight. But they all start begging him. At this point, I'm thinking, wow, they're pretty keen for this to happen. Rick must be brilliant. <laughs> Everyone at the bar gets excited and they start dancing. As Rick takes the stage, Cindy's got such a wetter on that she almost swallows a wine glass whole. My feet start to move and they push me from my chair. My fingers start to stamp and wanna run through your hair. Wow. The song is called The Shimmy Slide and some of the customers have worked out a dance routine to it. Come on, pretty baby, let's do the shimmy slide. Rick's dancing is less impressive. He's just stepping to the left, then stepping to the right, with the occasional hip swing reserved for the good bits. He's also clearly reading the words that someone's holding up in front of him. Look at his face. Oh, you're on fire when I grab you by the hand. The way he steals moving with the rhythm of the band. Stop it. This is shit. Oh, yeah. Rick performs the entire song. Are you serious? Yes. While that's going on, a group of men walk in. They go up to Cindy and they're like, hey, you're that bitch from the cult. And she's like, no, I'm not. You must have me mixed up with someone else and walks off. When Rick finishes singing, this woman gets up and starts stripping to the shimmy slide. Oh, let's do it again. No, please don't. While Rick and Cindy are pointing and laughing at the stripper, the men come over, try to talk to Cindy again and tell Rick to fuck off. But Rick's like, no. Then there's this fight. Wait. <laughs> The police come and arrest everyone involved except Rick. So he goes down to the police station to bail Huck out. Rick is pretty rude to the police officer on the desk. Hey, here's a quarter. Buy yourself a personality. Yeah. And then specified time later, we see Rick on a date with Cindy. Apparently, they're back together now. Rick's clearly some kind of local legend because the owner of the restaurant is thrilled to see him. It seems like he's a legend everywhere he goes. Here we find out that he's not just an incredible singer, dancer, and fighter, but he's also got some pretty good jokes. This guy with a duck on his head, he goes to the doctor. The doctor says, can I help you? The duck says, yeah, get this guy off my ass. <laughs> 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 when the owner leaves their table, this woman comes over, sings, and takes a photo of them. It looks just like us. Yes, Rick, it's a photo. That's the idea. She's a photographer, not a police sketch artist. <laughs> Rick says so much weird stuff in this film, the dialogue is atrocious. And there's no better example of this than the next scene, which I'm guessing is the next day, where Rick and Cindy are in a park discussing what a tough year it's been. You have no idea. I have some idea. I don't think you do. Maybe I don't. What? 
Oh, it gets worse. It's here we find out where Cindy's been for the past few months. She explains that when she and Rick broke up, she started hanging out with a new crowd and that she did know the guys from the bar the other night. They're members of a cult of devil worshippers. She's like, at first it was fine, but I started to realise it wasn't for me when they sacrificed a baby. Excuse me? Then we see a flashback of the cult meeting where this happened. And oh, look, the leader of the cult is Rick's ex-boss, Normad. Right. Cindy objected to the human sacrifice, so they tied her up and gagged her, then just let her leave after the ceremony. Why? No idea, but that's what happened. Cindy has heard through some friends that the cult members want to kill her because she knows too much. We'll work through this. We'll work through this. Oh, that's all right then. Cindy's like, anyway, how have you been, Rick? Are you still trying to be an actor? And yes. Yes, he is. In fact, he's prepared a scene from Hamlet for her. Really? Yep. To be or not to be, that is the question. Okay, he's not done there. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. More, please. Or to take up arms against the sea of trouble by opposing in them. And more. To die. To sleep. No more. And the rest. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache in a thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. Okay, then. Anyway, then they go back to what I assume is Rick's house. I can't hear a word they're saying because the music's so loud. The song, by the way, like all the songs in this film, is a song written and performed by the actor who plays Rick. All the songs are terrible and he can't even sing. And now you hear, and now you hear the thunder die. What? This is shit. Anyway, Rick starts rubbing ice cubes over Cindy and then they bang. The next evening, Rick's at the bar with Huck. Tonight, Rick's gone for a rugby shirt tucked into jeans. We know it's a rugby shirt because it's got rugby written in massive letters on it. While things are looking up for Rick, Huck's not doing well at all. He drinks every day and he thinks his ex-wife's been shagging all of his friends, including, it seems, Rick. Hey, man, chill the hell out. I'm your best friend. The next morning, Huck wakes up on the sofa and his ex-wife is there asking for an alimony payment. Huck can't afford to pay, so she calls the police and tells them he's trying to kill her, so he gets arrested. Apparently, Huck's ex-wife is shagging Normad, and he treats her like total dirt. And then they bang. Normad is somehow now a judge, and he's hearing Huck's case, so obviously, Huck's sent to jail. Oh, no! Huck's pretty sick of his life now, so he tries to end it by drinking bleach. Luckily, the janitor catches him, and he's taken to hospital. Rick and Cindy come to visit Huck and tell him he won't have to go back to prison because they petitioned the court to get him a new judge. Good. They tell him they'll be back to see him when they get back from collecting the rest of Cindy's stuff from her dad's house. Rick's not met Cindy's dad before, and he wants to make a good first impression. Yes, of course. So he turns up in leather trousers and sunglasses. What an idiot. <laughs> When they get to the house, it's clear that Cindy's dad hates her. Her dad's like, who's this? One of your devil-worshipping friends from Hollywood? This is Rick. He was on the police force for seven years, and now he drives a limousine. Really? Really? But Cindy's dad hates limo drivers. I won't have your kind in my home. So Rick and Cindy drive home. On the way there, they decide to pull over and watch the sunset, and here we get another song sung by Rick. And the waves are crashing in a deep blue sea. Really? And we don't have to wait long for the next one. They stop at a motel, get in the bath, and this comes on. I'll be with you when you hold me. And then they bang. And then they get married. For some reason, at the ceremony, Rick is wearing this. I just don't know what it is. This is shit. <laughs> it is. <laughs> As it's their wedding night, Cindy does a striptease for Rick to the shimmy slide. Come on. Pretty baby, let's do the shimmy slide. I suppose at least it's the instrumental version this time. Yeah. And then they bang. Cut to Normad, who's telling his henchman he needs Cindy dead before the next cult meeting. But they need to find her first, so they convince this barmaid to tell them where she is. <laughs> Back at Rick, Cindy sees a photo of Normad. That's him. Why does Rick have a photo of Normad on his bedroom mirror? No idea, but that's where it is. She's like, this is the guy who runs the cult. He's the one who murdered the baby. What? Really? 
So Rick and Cindy are off to report this to the police. But oh no, Normad's men have found them and start following them. And oh no, Cindy's helmet has fallen off. In their mad rush to get away, Rick crashes the bike and Cindy's dead. At her funeral, there's Rick, who's bothered to dress appropriately on this occasion, Huck, Cindy's mum and her dad and stepmom who hate her. I told her something like this was going to happen. Brilliant. I'll get even for you, Cindy. I promise I'll get even. So Rick and Huck go over to what I assume is Normad's house, where he's doing a big drug deal. This is supposed to be the big crescendo, but it's tedious. So in summary, Rick kills everyone and finds Normad wearing his cult leader robe, doing a shit ton of gear on his own in his basement. You're the kind of puke that makes the world decay. Yeah. Then there's this fight. That doesn't look good. Then Rick manages to make Normad stab himself with his own knife, so he's dead. An unspecified time later, Rick takes flowers to Cindy's grave in double denim, with an American flag sewn into the jacket. Then this nun turns up and she's like, oh, hi, Rick, there's something you need to know. And yeah, it turns out Cindy is still alive. What? Apparently they had to fake the funeral because her life was in danger. But now Normad and all his friends are dead, they can live together in peace. All right, I can't believe you're alive. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.